On today's episode, I'm talking about product management 101 for founders. Hi, I'm Kyle Racky, and today what I want to talk about is product management. This is a question that I get asked a lot from new founders who uh, don't have a lot of experience in building software. Um, they may have come from other industries, but you know this is their first time actually hiring developers and building a digital product. And so one of the questions they ask is, you know, what is product management? Who is that person? Who should I be hiring? Um, and what kind of skills do they need to have? So that's that's what I want to talk about on today's episode. So, you know, if you're early stage and let's say you have a developer in-house that's building the product, you may think that that's enough. All you need is engineers and, and you know, developers to build the product. Um, but as far as what actually gets built and what do those features, you know, which are the features we're going to build and how are they going to work and function, that really is um, in the, the camp of product. So you've got um, a team of product people that actually decide on features and figure out how they're going to look and how they're going to function. And then they pass that off to the engineering team to build and test and release. And so you may kind of wonder, okay, well, what skills do those product people need to have? So what I'm going to talk about is um, basics of product management and how it's really different than project management. You're not looking for people to just manage a project and the timelines and the deliverables. You're actually looking for visionaries who um, are helping guide and shape your product uh, into your vision as the CEO, where you want the company to go. And so you'll find that there's a lot of product management practices that you can implement yourself as a founder, even before you hire a product person. And then once you're at the stage where you can hire a team of product people and a product manager, um, these are the kind of people you're going to be looking for. So if you've built a product already to date, um, it might have been you as the founder kind of deciding these are the features we want to build. This is this is version one of the product. But what you'll find as you start to grow uh, your customer base is that you're going to be inundated every day with feature requests. I wish you guys did this. I wish your product had this feature. I can't use it if it doesn't have a calendar tool or I'm not going to sign up to a paid account if it doesn't have an inbox that I can use. And so just managing and filtering all of those um, requests from customers is a full-time job. And so really what product management is all about is building the right product at the right time. So you, you cannot say yes to every feature that people want. And in fact, you don't, you shouldn't, even if you had the ability to launch all those features, it would result in a really buggy or not buggy, but uh, bloated product that's clunky and hard to use and has too many things, a Swiss army knife product. So product management is all about deciding on the right features to build at the right time and making sure they're implemented well and, and uh, the user experience is very strong and they're well designed and thought out. So that's really what you want out of your, your product team. And when you're hiring a product manager, it's great. I mean, if you're in the position where you can hire somebody who is a product leader at another SaaS company, if that's the kind of product you're building, um, it's amazing if you can get talent in-house that's already been there and done that. What I found in my experience, though, is that, you know, depending on budget and where you live in the world and, and just the talent that you're able to get in-house, it's more likely that you'll need to nurture and, and, and teach and guide somebody with strong uh, foundation level skills who maybe hasn't done it before somewhere else, but they're very teachable and they can grow into a product leader. So let's say that you're the one acting as a product manager um, before you're able to hire or, or maybe you have a product uh, person in house that you're working with. What I want to talk about is uh, my frameworks that we use at Proposify for feature planning. And, um, you know, you can kind of take what we do and adapt it as you see fit um, for your own company. So the way we kind of look at feature planning at Proposify is that it's it's a bit of an art and a science. It's not really 100 percent of either. What you find is that when you talk to customers and you read what conversations your customer support people are having and you look at survey results and you're basically just always immersing yourself in the voice of the customer, it usually becomes very evident what to build. Um, you know, if you absolutely need to have, say, a signature tool in your product, you're going to find that, um, you know, that comes up so often that it's just a given that we need to do this. And then other times you're going to find that 
people feel very strongly about a certain feature, but it's a very select few who have that need. And maybe it's something you do want to build down the road and feature as an add-on that you can use to maybe drive uh, expansion revenue through higher price plans. But um, more often than not, you're going to need to say no. And that actually is... A, a, most of the art of, of product management is saying no to things. Um, to give you an example, uh, you know, there's in our product Proposify, we, um, we've had a request that's come through a lot for table of contents feature. And that's basically so in your proposal, you can have just an automatically generated table of contents. And what I've always found over the years is that when I really dug into the customer requ request, I asked them why they were asking for this particular feature. And so in our case, for example, um, they might say, I want a table of contents feature. And I'll say, well, why do you want that? And they'll say, because when the customer, you know, my customer um, downloads a PDF of the proposal, I want them to see the table of contents in there. And so then I ask, well, okay, why are you having them download a PDF? Like, are you not sending it through our product? And they'll say, well, no, I'm not. And really for us, in our case, that's how you get most of the value out of Proposify is through sending the link that then you know, your your customers, our customers' client will then open in a browser. They'll be able to interact with the pricing, watch videos, um, sign it, really make it an interactive proposal. And then our customer will be able to get insights and metrics into where their customers are looking. So it's, it's very important to us that our customers use the product the way it was designed and send out their proposal. And so that when I find out that they're actually just manually emailing PDFs. That means they're only getting half of the value out of the product. So then my next question is, why aren't you sending it through our product? And then they might say, well, I don't trust that my clients will be able to open it. Or, you know, I'm afraid that the email will go in, into their spam. And so then what I'll actually find is I get deeper insight into why they're not using the product properly. So it's kind of amazing when a customer asks for a feature and you keep drilling down and saying, why, why, why? Eventually you get to the real reason why they're asking for it. And nine times out of 10, it means you don't need to build the feature they were asking for. You actually need to fix something else much higher upstream in the product. So I've talked about kind of that art part of product management where you're kind of going by, you know, gut feel and talking to customers and really just, you know, understanding from a qualitative standpoint how customers feel. But what we like to do at Proposify is we also balance that a little bit with the science and we try to come up with a bit more of an analytical reason why we're building a certain feature or planning which features we're going to build next. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, so there's two methods that we use at Proposify. One is um, we call it, it's just an ice score. So you might have heard the term ice score. It's uh, it's used in, in the growth hacking um, terminology. Sean Ellis, who popularized growth hacking, has come out had come up with this ICE score. So what it stands for is impact, confidence, and ease of implementation. So, you know, in a growth hacking standpoint, what that would mean is you're going to score different tests that you run based on how uh, big an impact you think they'll have, how confident you are that they'll have that impact, and then how easy is that test to roll out. And so what we've done is we've basically taken that exact same scoring mechanism and we use it for product features. So for example, if there's an initiative or a part of the product that we think is going to be the next thing that we really want to prioritize, we'll, we might take our top five features and we'll ice score them. So we'll, we'll kind of think about, okay, one out of five, how impactful will this be? Like, well, is this really going to help us grow the business? Is it going to help us target a whole new customer segment? Is it going to help us just nail a, a, a quarterly strategy like how impactful will this be on the business and so we'll score that out of five and then what we'll do is we'll talk about how confident are we that that it will so if it's a feature that if it works we it could just we, we could knock it out of the park and it would you know it would drive growth for the business but is that just a guess how sure are we that it's going to actually do that so then we would score it one out of five for confidence and then finally, we would look at the ease of implementation. It, because if this is something that it's a black box, we have no, it's super complicated. We have no idea how long this thing will take. It's going to only get a one. Whereas if it's actually really easy, we can knock that out in like one or two sprints. It makes it so much easier to say yes when you know that it's actually really easy to implement and we're pretty confident it's going to have a big impact. So that's one way that we score features. The other one is what we call the all people all the time chart. And so what that is, 
is it's basically a chart that has an X and Y axis. And at the top right of the chart, you know, you you basically have this is a feature that all of our customers will use all the time. And that's the kind of features you mostly want to be building and prioritizing with your dev team. But then as you kind of go down, you might say, well, this is a feature that a lot of people have asked for, but not everybody's really going to use this thing. But the people who are going to use it are going to use it all the time. Or the other way, um, you know, all people will use it, but they won't use it all the time. And so those are the features that you still might build, but you want to think about a little bit more carefully. But then what happens a lot of times when you look at features is when you really drill down and look at the requests, um, you find that only a few people have asked for this and the people who, you know, you are building it for may only use it occasionally. And those are the features that essentially you want to make sure you're saying no to and scrapping because you just don't want to tie up dev resources building features people don't use. So the last thing that I want to dig into is the practical stuff that that people ask me about, you know, really when you dig into the details, how do we manage product at Proposify? And so I want to share a couple of the, a couple of the tools that we use. So um, the first one that uh, is very important to our product management process is a tool called Product Board. And the great thing about it is it integrates with Intercom so that customer support, um, when they're talking to customers and they're asking for features, we have them just tag a statement that a customer makes like, hey, I wish you guys had the ability to have multiple signatures per signer. They would take that statement, tag it as feature request. And then with the integration, it goes into product board as an inbox. So the people in the product team have access to the product board inbox and it's full of all these feature requests. And so what what one of them does, or uh, they share it across the whole team, is on a regular basis, they'll read through the customer support tickets and they'll assign those statements of what the customer's asking to an initiative. So the initiative might be a better mobile experience or better previews. And if it's a, di- it's a completely different feature that maps to that initiative, then they'll just create a new feature for it and all of those comments will be associated with it or they can move that comment to an already existing um, feature within product board. And the other thing you can do is you can add rich metadata to it. So you can assign it to a certain segment of your customers. You can prioritize it in terms of how important was this to the customer? Were they saying they're going to leave if they don't have this? Or was it just kind of a nice to have? Um, And the great thing about product board is that then if you want to go into your list of features and really just have it spit out a score of you know, in terms of how many people are asking for this and how important is it, it will actually give you a a pretty good prioritized list of which features are the most important. And then from there, what you can do is, uh, you know, it integrates with Jira, so you can push it into Jira where your developers are actually building um, real real tickets, real uh, product features. And they'll be able to go and review all that nice customer feedback and all the, you know, um, context of what, customers were talking about when they're building it. The last thing that we do uh, from a product standpoint is we deliver what we call feature packets to the developers. Because sometimes what we've experienced is that if we're too vague about a certain product initiative and we get it into the developers, um, um, you know, workflow and, and projects, if we're too vague, the developer doesn't really know what they're building and they might build it wrong or they might build it a way we hadn't thought of. And so we try to be as detailed as possible, knowing that things might change down the road. We still want to give them all the information we can give them. So the product team creates um, feature packets, which are essentially a document. It could be Google Docs. It could be in Basecamp. Um, and it's all the um, context around how, you know, why our customers are asking for, say, multiple signatures, a link to the designs and the prototypes and how it's supposed to function, um, maybe a competitor analysis, how, how do different competitors do it. And so it's great when we deliver that to the dev team, they've got so much more information that they can work with and really understand more of the business context behind it as opposed to just purely, you know, what they're building. So that's how we manage product at Proposify. Again, if you um, are new to this or if your startup is really new, you might be doing a lot of this as the founder working with your developer. Um, But if you get to the stage where you actually can hire a product leader or a team of of, uh, product people, UX design people, um, this is kind of our framework for uh, for handling product at Proposify, and hopefully it's helpful to you as you build out your product. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Um, be sure to comment if you have any thoughts or questions, and I'll see you next time. 
This episode of Lifetime Value is brought to you by Proposify. Proposify improves sales productivity so your team spends less time creating proposals and more time selling. Start your free trial at Proposify.com and be sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss a single episode.